her study of a killer is a lifetime movie that, for all intents and purposes, sucks. I mean, you have to love a movie whose poster tells you who the killer is, even though it's not revealed until the end of the movie and was clearly intended to be a secret. Whoopsie daisy! <laughs> the movie starts with Miss Meadows, a theater teacher at the local high school, working on a costume after hours. She hears noises coming from the stage, and when she goes to check it out, a set piece falls on her and kills her. Well, that sucks. Or was it murder? No one takes the news of her death harder than our main character, Ellie. Not only because Miss Meadows had a huge impact on her life when she was a student there 15 years ago, but because her daughter Brooklyn is the one who found Miss Meadows dead. Ellie consoles her daughter over their loss. At home, Ellie, Brooklyn, her husband Daniel, and her best friend Jasmine, who's been her best friend since high school, eat pizza and reminisce about Miss Meadows. The women continue talking outside, where Jasmine is like, what was the deal with you and Miss Meadows back in high school anyway? Why were you always in her classroom? And listen to this. I was pregnant when we graduated. How? by having sex. I would have known. Well, I was, I was only a few weeks pregnant. So you didn't give up college because you were so in love with Daniel. No, I gave up college to have Brooklyn. Why is this news to her? I thought they were best friends. She sounds utterly confused to learn that Ellie was pregnant at the end of high school and skipped out on college in the fall to give birth. Did she not know Ellie was pregnant during her entire pregnancy? Not to mention, she knows her daughter Brooklyn is 15. Didn't she ever do the math? No. Then Ellie says this. My mom wanted to uh, fix the problem. But Miss Meadows convinced her that she was a blessing and not a problem. So your theater teacher convinced your mom not to make you have an abortion? It looks like it, yes. Is that really her place? No. As you can see, Brooklyn sees her mom saying all this. After Jasmine leaves, Ellie goes into her bathroom and finds a broken bracelet on the floor and her mirror smashed up with the words, blood will have blood. <laughs> Daniel and her daughter come running in, who were also home at the time, yet nobody saw anything, and wonder what's going on. Els, what is this? It's Macbeth. What? It's a quote from Macbeth. Ellie tells a cop, who also went to high school with her, that back in high school, she belonged to an advanced theater group, and everyone in that group had one of those bracelets, including Miss Meadows. Therefore, she believes Miss Meadows' death was planned and somehow connected to the break-in, which actually makes sense. But what do the cops do? Nothing. Brooklyn throws a fit because she overheard her mom talking with Jasmine about how if it wasn't for Miss Meadows, she never would have been born. Daniel's like, why did you tell her that? Ellie's like, I didn't. She overheard me telling Jasmine. And he's like, I thought we both agreed that we'd tell her when she turned 18. Tell her what? That her grandma wanted her to be aborted? And what's so magical about waiting until she's 18? I don't really know. At school, Ellie tells the principal that she wants to do a tribute to Miss Meadows at the class reunion. I think that's a great idea. Yes, why give Miss Meadows a proper burial when you can just play a slideshow for your drunken classmates in the sweaty gym? Because that's all that ever happens. For how beloved this woman was, there's never a funeral in the movie or even talks of one. In their bedroom, where they don't have one single thing on any of the walls, Ellie tells Daniel her idea about the slideshow and that she wants to go over to Miss Meadows' house to find some more photos because she still has the key from when she would watch her house while she was out of town. How is that not trespassing? Daniel wakes up super early and without Ellie knowing, takes the key and goes to Miss Meadows' house. He digs through some files and leaves. The next time we see him, he's at a cemetery visiting someone's grave. What's that all about? Ellie bumps into Brooklyn at school and the new school counselor, who Brooklyn has been receiving guidance from ever since finding her dead teacher. And wouldn't you know it, it's a woman named Indigo who was in the drama club with Ellie during her senior year of high school. You're the new counselor? The two women had a falling out back in high school. Indigo blamed Ellie for starting rumors about selling drugs, which led to her getting expelled. And Ellie's like, I didn't start those rumors, I only heard them. I tried hard to make friends that year, 
I joined theater because I liked the people, including you. You were part of our group. I was just talking about the bracelets that you had made us, remember? So Indigo is the one that made those bracelets, like the one found on the bathroom floor during the home invasion. Aha! Ellie meets with Jasmine and a woman named Tiffany to discuss the school reunion. Tiffany is acting cold towards Ellie, so Ellie's like, what's your problem with me? Is it because I went out on one date with your now husband Trevor, who's the cop in the movie, back when we were in high school? Tiffany's like, no, I care that you slept with Trevor back in high school. And Ellie's all, what are you talking about? And Tiffany goes, at Rick's party, I saw you two leave together. And Ellie's like, Daniel was drunk and being a jerk, so I asked Trevor to drive me home. And Tiffany goes, no, you two had sex before leaving the party. I saw Daniel's Letterman jacket, the jacket you always wore, Ellie, on the back of a chair next to the bed. And Ellie's Hall, I threw that jacket at Daniel before leaving with Trevor and told him it was over between us. Then Trevor drove me home. And then they're like, well, if it wasn't you and Trevor having sex in that bed, then it must have been Daniel and someone else. Clearly, this was an excruciating scene to watch. After a school assembly, Brooklyn introduces herself to Avery, who was Ellie's acting rival back in high school, but is now a famous movie star, and is only back in town for a few days to attend the reunion. Brooklyn says that she was hoping to get some acting advice. Avery drives her home and tells her that her mom, Ellie, loved acting even more than she did in high school. Well, that's wonderful. Ellie meets with Trevor to ask about that party back in high school. He says that he heard Daniel might have slept with someone that night. I heard people saying that Daniel slept with somebody at the party. Why didn't you tell me? I thought you already knew. I know. Look, everybody was, was talking about it. Jasmine didn't know. Jasmine doesn't know anything. She didn't know you were pregnant. I don't think Daniel really ever told anybody what happened. Ellie goes over to Miss Meadows' house, which features a lovely photo straight from the actress's IMDb page and starts collecting photos for the tribute. What gives you the right to go into this woman's house and just start stealing shit? Because she was your favorite teacher? Yes. At a desk, she notices a folder titled Baby Bauman, which is her husband Daniel's last name. Yikes. Ellie asks Daniel if he slept with anyone at Rick's party back in high school. He refuses to answer, but then calls her two scenes later. And he's basically like, I know I was drinking a lot that night, but I'm pretty sure I was drugged because I never would have slept with someone otherwise. Sure, pal. And she's like, well, why didn't you tell anyone? Me or the police? And he's like, I was embarrassed. I was a football player and someone took advantage of me. I don't believe this guy. And then he says this. Especially when I found out that she was pregnant. What? Over the phone! He tells his wife over the phone that back in high school, he got another woman pregnant besides her. Good move. H hang on, you're, you're telling me that you have another child, Daniel? Miss Meadows helped her arrange adoption for the baby girl. Of course she did. Who made this teacher the ambassador for all pregnant students? First she convinces Ellie's mom into letting her have a baby, then she helps this other girl find adoption for her baby? Just butt out and teach the damn drama class, lady. Okay. Daniel says that Miss Meadows helped him track down his secret love child a few years ago, but the child had died in a car crash when she was five. Speaking of car crashes... Look, can we please just finish this conversation in person? Ouch. After being run over, everyone goes to visit Daniel at the hospital, including Avery. While there, she tells Ellie that she has the perfect life. Me? Everyone wants to be you. I think I'd trade it all for what you have. She then convinces her to attend the high school reunion that night, while Brooklyn stays at the hospital with Daniel. Ellie and Jasmine go to the reunion, where Tiffany drops a bomb about Avery. Did you know she was pregnant when we graduated? No. Of course you didn't know. The stupid look on Ellie's face means that she realizes Avery is the one who Daniel unwillingly slept with at Rick's party back in high school and got pregnant. And the baby was put up for adoption but later died in a car wreck. At her dad's bedside in the hospital, Brooklyn receives a text from Avery saying that she brought her food. She meets her in some weird back parking lot and gets chloroform. <laughs> 
Now is the moment where we're supposed to be shocked that Avery is the bad guy, but we already saw it on the poster, so we're not. Avery somehow transports Brooklyn to the high school theater stage and texts a photo to Ellie. When Ellie comes to rescue her, Avery pulls out a knife and is convinced that Brooklyn is really her daughter that she gave up for adoption years ago. Now I understand everything. She convinced me to give my baby up for adoption just so she could give her to you. No, 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 no. I won't let you have her. <laughs> Ellie pushes over this thing, which Avery could easily avoid, but instead lets it fall right on her. And that's how their fight ends. Well, that was exciting. Ellie grabs coffee with the girls and buys them all bracelets because she's in such high spirits. And here comes her husband, who she seems to have forgiven overnight about getting her nemesis pregnant in high school and then lying about it for 15 years. But whatever. Eh, who cares?